Welcome back, one and all, to the Lovecraft Country Time Jamboree. Every week, we'll be taking a look at each episode of the biggest horror series of 2020 as it drops. This time around, we look at episode two, Whitey on the Moon. Young Saga. Before we begin, remember to give this video a like, share with your buddies across the electronic superhighway, click subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Let's get the word out to new folks so we can make this channel bigger and better. Let's get this right out of the way and say Lovecraft Country Time Jamboree is going to have spoilers. So if you want to play along, be sure to watch the episode first on HBO or HBO Max, and then tune back in for this episode breakdown. So you've been warned about the spoilers, on with the episode synopsis. Episode 2 starts out with a fun montage of Letty, Journey Smollett, and Uncle George, Courtney B. Vance, dancing around in their rooms, happy as can be, enjoying the luxuries of the mansion they ended up at when we last saw them. This is an upbeat opening to what turns out to be a pretty somber episode. Letty and Uncle George have no recollection as to the events that brought them to the mansion. All they can remember is waking up in a comfy bed. Atticus, played by Jonathan Majors, seems to be the only one who remembers the harrowing events in the woods from the night before. After being settled into breakfast by William, played by Jordan Patrick Smith, a suspicious gray-haired man who lurks around the hallways of the mansion, our heroic trio make their way to the closest town, which is seemingly stuck in a more ancient time. Warned to be back in the castle before dinner, the trio run into more monsters on the way back, only to be dispelled by Christina Braithwaite, played by Abby Lee, who blows a whistle that seems to repel the beasts. Returning to the castle, Christina brings Atticus to meet her father Samuel, played by Tony Goldwyn, who is having an operation without anesthetic when they arrive. Samuel reveals that Atticus may be the descendant and direct heir to Titus Braithwaite, the leader of a secret society who will be hosting the upcoming dinner. Taking Atticus back to his room, Christina attests that she is a friend and can be trusted, to which Atticus bargains with her to lift the spell that is causing Letty and Uncle George to forget the monsters they have encountered. Christina reluctantly agrees. She then rushes to the farmhouse where she helps a cow give birth to a Saugoth monster. Cradling the monster in her arms, Christina is joyous and says that this is the first time she has helped in such a birth. In her room, Letty encounters who she thinks is Atticus, but when he becomes sexually forceful with her, she finds that he has a giant snake for a penis. In George's room, he encounters a lost love, but is able to see through the illusion. Atticus encounters G. Ah, played by Jamie Chung, the woman he called last episode and has a brutal knife fight with her that suggests he has experienced the encounter before while he was away at war. Upon defeating each of their challenges, the three come together in the hallway, shaken but still focused on finding Atticus's father Montrose. Atticus and George are invited to a dinner where Samuel serves up a piece of his own intestine as the main course. When Samuel continues to hold back answers in regards to the location of Montrose, Atticus, George, and Letty try to escape from the castle again, only to run into Montrose, played by Michael Kenneth Williams, as he is climbing out of a hole in the ground on the castle lawn. Montrose scolds the three for looking for him, and Letty and George are both shot. Inside the castle, Atticus is being prepped for a ceremony, tearful that Letty and George are seemingly dead. Christina says that Samuel will heal both of them soon, and Atticus decides to get the ceremony over with. But the ceremony backfires, disintegrating Samuel and the rest of the cultists. As Atticus attempts to leave, he finds Letty alive and well, and Montrose in their car holding the lifeless Uncle George. Whew, that's a whole lot of stuff happening in one episode. And therein lies my main problem with Lovecraft Country, after watching only two episodes. Shit is just moving way too fast so fast that I think they're glossing over some very key moments that could be milked for dramatic potential. Atticus and crew leave the castle only to be whisked back and then leave again and are taken back again. Each of the main trio encounter horrors from their past, but those simply make for a quick action scene, and then they move on from it, almost unfazed. Christina has one scene where she's sultry 
and talking with Atticus. And then it cuts to another scene where she's rushing into a farmhouse and reaching inside a cow's vagina to pull out a little monster. There just seems to be too much packed into these two episodes, and I wish they would slow down the pace a bit so we can enjoy some of these crazy moments that have the potential to be both tender and horrifying. It's exasperating to watch. In the first episode, they toss the road trip aside after one episode, shucking away potential for some dramatic on-the-road adventures during the Jim Crow era. I think that could have at least been worth two episodes. Hell, Letty simply shows up packing the car without any kind of scene explaining why she is leaving so quickly after returning home. There are at least two episodes worth of material in both of these first episodes, and it would give each installment a chance to ease into the Lovecraftian horror, rather than the nosedive right into the deep end that we got. In the second episode, George's death felt rushed and unnecessary. We haven't even gotten to know him, really. I feel Letty is way too accepting of all of this horror and magic that's going on. Atticus is already this strong, heroic guy, He needs some time to stumble around in the dark before he stands up straight and tall in his Power Man t-shirt. Unfortunately, we aren't getting any of those developments. I hope this series slows down eventually. Not too slow, but enough for the characters to have real reactions to the crazy shit that's going on around them. Sure, it's wonderful that the series is so rich in racial themes regarding the relationship between white and black America in our very recent past, The Whitey on the Moon title and the recitation of the poem of the same name is heavy in tone and highlights that the goals of one culture can be extremely different than the goals of another. But the lack of dramatism really does take away from the power I think these episodes could have without the artsy poetry or finely curated musical interludes. While I'm getting to like the characters and I dig the horrors that appear when they do, Playing a clever song over a montage isn't elevating this material to the heights it could be attaining. Put plainly, so far, the pacing of this whole series is way off. I'm still recommending Lovecraft Country, but at this pace, I don't know if it's going to maintain interest to those who have gotten used to deft character development and powerful storytelling in their HBO series. That'll be it for today. If you like this video, please pound that thumbs up button. Share this video with your social media addicted pals. If you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on mlmillerwrites.com. Don't forget about the new trade paperback for my comic book horror series, Grave Trancers, out in all of the finer comic shops on September 2nd. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for alerts to be the first to see my future videos. Thanks so much for your time, and take care. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be Stuck inside your reality Yeah.